Hello. Before um, we progress any further in the one thing planning model and how to actually develop your own one thing plan for yourself and your business, I'd like to discuss some key insights into um, the one thing approach. So this video is called Key Insights into the One Thing Approach and I'm going to do it in two parts. The first point I'd like to make is that we've talked about this but it's worth remembering. Success is built sequentially. Small dominoes can topple over larger dominoes if they're stacked correctly. So extraordinary results are determined by how narrow you can make the focus. Lining up the dominoes, stacking up those dominoes properly and narrowing the focus right down. You should do fewer things for greater effect as opposed to more things with many effects. Forget about multitasking. Forget about equality, this notion that everything is equal. Things are not equal. Achievers always work from a clear sense of priority and focus. The second insight I'd like to share with you is the, the idea of habit. I'm a great advocate of habits. And the idea is, or the key insight is, become a person of powerful habits. In his book, The One Thing, Gary Keller talks about the weakness of willpower, like willpower on will call when it's not. And also this idea of personal discipline that we strengthen, we discipline ourselves. Oh, this is the way and I'm you know, very, very strong. That's not the way the world actually works. It's very, very hard to continue uh, to operate like that. It's much easier to develop habits that are in fact success habits, habits that allow you to do the things that you want to do. So make it easy for yourself, develop the habits that lead to success. The third insight that I would like to address is this one of being appropriate in the moments of your life. And what does it mean to be successful? I have a great definition of success. I've, I quote it all the time. Success is the progressive realization of a predetermined, worthwhile personal goal. It's a thing of the present moment. So how do you know if you're being successful? Happiness or fulfillment really is, is, is what success is. And that is about having a clear sense that what you're doing right now is in alignment with your purpose and who you are and why you exist. The fourth point um, I would like to make is the insight that how we phrase questions to ourselves and the answers that we get from those questions to a great extent determines what becomes of our life. A plan is a question. It's a way of asking a question of yourself. The secret of getting ahead is getting started on the things that matter. If you have a plan that asks a question of you every day, what's the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else is easier or even unnecessary. In the context of my life, my next 36 months, 12 months, 90 days, 30 days this week, then that kind of question uh, begs an answer and the answer shapes your life. And this leads me to the last um, insight I'd like to talk about in this video. And that's the idea of chunking. Most people don't chunk out their time. What they have is a whole series of activities, one flowing into another. And they look at the end of the day and they think, a job well done, I've reduced the pile from there to there. Successful people don't function like that. The first thing that successful people do is they recognize that resting is the single most important thing that you can do. So they chunk out time for downtime, for recuperation, for rejuvenation, for recovery. They recognize that personal energy mismanagement um, can be uh, detrimental to success. You must have your energy, you must be strong, you must be healthy, you must be awake. You can't do that working 24 seven. So to achieve extraordinary results, you must chunk out your time. As Gary Keller says, you must be a maker in the morning and a manager in the afternoon. You're one thing by one o'clock. I like to run. And it's interesting, I run in the morning, even though it's not my preferred time to run. I'd rather run at midday when the body's warmed up a bit. But I run in the morning, there's a reason I run in the morning. Because when I run in the morning, my run gets done. If I postpone my run and say I'll do it later in the day, the day catches up. The exact same principle applies to chunking out your time. You must chunk out your time for the things that actually matter. Take them, schedule them into your diary, and make them happen. Dan Sullivan, uh, the strategic coach, uh, talks about chunking in the context of focus-free and buffer days. And he, he also starts with free days. 
He says the first thing you do is you chunk out your free days, your weekends, your time off, your time with your family, your rejuvenation time. And then you chunk out your focus days. And those are the days when you spend 80% of your time working on the highest uh, return investment time activities, your one thing um, activities. And the last time, of day, last time of day is a buffer day. It's a day where you sit back, you plan, you think, you clear your desk, and you make sure that your free days are free and your focus days are focused. In respect of which model you, you adopt, chunking out days or chunking out parts of days, the critical issue is, and a critical insight uh, into one thing planning, is that you must chunk out your time.